everyone, this is Rocco coming at you with my first 11.3.6 drive. Uh, this is the next day after getting it. Didn't feel like going out yesterday, and then I'm probably not going to do too many updates uh, or too many drives on this version. So it seems like. Oh, come on. I thought I was going to do it. It seems like this bug is still there. Everyone's like. This never happened until version 11. Maybe it's something to do with calibrating the cameras. Maybe it's my GPS being off, but it actually looks like it's on right here for once. Um, maybe it's a bunch of other reasons. But, um, oh, <laughs> wait for it to come on. But yeah, by the way, it's Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. Uh, if you celebrate or not celebrate, it's whatever. It's a uh, real nice day outside. And. Just going over to a friend's place to hang out, and we'll uh, see how it does. This is our curvy mountain road test. Uh, this is what I consider to be bare minimum curvy roads. If you see any video that says curvy roads, um, obviously our crazy hill test is the epitome of curvy um, mountain road test. That's not even common for the mountains to have that many hairpin turns, but... Um, what we are going to look for is uh, see how smooth it is, see if it maintains speed going around the curves uh, and doesn't slow down too much. That's that's what makes actual curvy mountain road driving not enjoyable with full self driving. That was mostly good. This car that pulled out here, it hesitated a little bit, but once it figured out the car was going to continue accelerating, uh, then it decided to maintain speed. But yeah, the, the, see right here, like it's fine, I guess if I was in a robo taxi, I probably wouldn't notice. Uh, I'd probably be looking down at my phone, or watching something on the screen, or something, I just wouldn't even pay attention to it. Um, but my preference is just maintain 45 mile an hour. Like it, it's totally comfortable um, to go 45 around that curve. Uh, and honestly, I'd be going 50 if I was driving myself. So, we're just gonna let it go to speed limit and see how it does. Okay, so this is a yield sign up here if you're take, taking a right and it's a stop sign if you're taking a left. Um, previous, see a stopping for stop sign is that's wrong. It's actually stopping, it doesn't need to stop here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press it through um, because it's a yield if you're turning right and it's a stop if you're turning left. And right here, you can see we're getting a 20 mile an hour, right? Oh, look there. I stopped right when you hit the school zone. Or changed right when you hit the school zone, so that's good. Um, it's Sunday, uh, so there's no school in session. I don't think this school has a church in it. That truck went over the line. Uh, so we're going to speed it up just a tiny bit. Regularly have cyclists on this road something we have to look out for as you saw in my I think it was the last video I did for Saluda it's went around a cyclist uh, several of the cyclists that watched um, commented that it was a little bit close um, so we don't need to stop here and don't need the blinker on see um, I want to comment on that here that but yes a couple of the cyclists said it was a uh, no that car is not moving as much as it says student driver on it But, uh, how would you say the, yeah, cyclist. So they said I should have waited, or the car rather should have waited, to get um, behind the cyclist. And, um, and then um, once the car passed, then got over and passed the cyclist in the, all the way on the other side of the lane. Give, give a lot more room, basically. Um, but yeah, the blinkers. So you just had the metal blinker that came on. I wanted to comment on that. So we had a thread on Twitter uh, about how the blinkers, you know, don't turn on when it gets on the highway, but then um, to just, you know, if you're going right, go right, go left, turn on the left blinker. However, the car doesn't know yet what's a turn and what's just a curve in the road. So far, every single time the blinker has gone on uh, since uh, that uh, yield sign, it's just a turn in the road. Is it? Sorry, a curve in the road, not a turn. 
And so the car turns the blinker on, on all these curves when it doesn't need to. It's interesting how it adds this now. It's never had that route uh, before. I don't want to go that way because it's a uh, gravel road. So I don't want to... I have gone that way once with this car. I just Once I went in the first time, I won't go it again. Um, unless that's my only option just because it's... There's a lot of potholes and you have to go really slow and the car is covered in dust. You can't have the windows open. So it's not the greatest time. Now if I have a Cybertruck, that could be a different story. I won't care when I have a Cybertruck. I won't get one right away. So I'm not going to be, once once Hardware 4 is out, I'm going to be the Hardware 3 tester, basically. And you'll see the speed limit is still wrong on this road. It used to be 55. But then it went down, uh, they've edited the speed limit to 45 on this road the whole way. But yeah, I will eventually get a Cybertruck um, at Hardware 4 whenever that is. Probably um, three years from now is when I'm thinking. Uh, actually, no, sorry, wait. Yeah, three years from now. My car is going to be five years old next month. And I want the warranty to run out on this car before I get a Cybertruck. I just want to... And, and I'm keeping this car, so keep that in mind. I'm keeping this car, so I want to get full use of the warranty on this car, and then get the Cybertruck on top of this one. Uh, but we'll see how that works. Cybertruck's probably going to be for a business. I'm going to just put that, apply that under a business probably, and use that for that purpose, um, as well as you know, drive around, camp, do all that stuff. Actually, so, so far, the fact that I haven't commented on the curves on this section so far means it's doing pretty well. <laughs> because I, normally I can tell it decelerates too much or reaccelerates too much. Um, but actually, it's doing pretty good. Wait a sec. Okay, yeah, that, that's right. Um, it's doing pretty good, considering. So it needs to, like account for these signs now and needs to start like all these little signs see notice how it went up to 55 right at the sign that says we're about to go to 40 um because it still has the pre-programmed gps map data um for the speed limits and it needs to override that when it sees a sign and it needs to see that sign which i guess they got rid of the actual 40 mile per hour sign that was on this curve right here so i don't know where that went but it is 40 mile an hour right in this section right here. Which now it has a GPS coded speed limit. Interesting. Unless I just missed a sign. Um, maybe I did. I don't know. They put, I think they, they put a fence on that bridge. I don't know if people were jumping off of it. And they just to deter people from jumping off of it or what. That's odd. But this is the really actually curvy section right here. And normally I would go much quicker around this section so far the car is doing good again I would easily go to speed limit no problem it's just super comfortable to go to speed limit see this is going too slow for me now it's speeding back up see that's the problem it slows down too much then reaccelerates too quickly uh, that's what makes the curvy mountain roads less enjoyable uh, because that's what makes me sick in the car if someone else is driving if it stays if it, if it maintains speed um you know i would rather if the car is driving itself i would rather it stay below the speed limit and not reaccelerate to the speed limit when it has the opportunity when it knows it's going to have another curve coming up so we have a stop sign here on the right which is not for this road and in the past it has stopped see it's trying to it's trying to stop for that stop sign um, so I did, I, all I needed to do is tap the accelerator and it was fine. So we're actually right in the middle of the road right now because there's no lines. You can't see the line. Well, actually the car made out the lines. You know, like there's no visible line on the road. That was pretty good uh, considering. It still was a little bit hesitant, but it didn't, it didn't break like, it wasn't jerky. It was pretty smooth. Um, what, what I've noticed now in these newer versions is that when it is hesitant, instead of like braking, reaccelerating, braking, reaccelerating, it just stays slower. And doesn't like it doesn't automatically reaccelerate, which is good. That's what it needs to do until it gains that confidence to 
not be that way. This is some of the best it's ever been, actually, for uh, driving on curvy mountain roads. I still think it has room for improvement, because that's just, I'm very picky. I live in this, I live in the mountains. I drive these roads all the time. Maybe it's just because I'm used to the curves, so I'm particularly picky how it drives around them, but I think this was totally acceptable. If someone else was riding in the car, they would be like blown away how well it's doing. But I, we're getting to the point that I'm gonna nitpick a lot. This is, um, I'm being extra critical because we're looking for perfection. I expect no less than a computer controlled car to have perfection. A human's never gonna be perfect. And oh, to clarify, a vehicle, the car is never gonna be 100% perfect. But it should be better than a human. In like 99.99999% of certain areas. You know, keep on going with the nines. Um, it should be better in most scenarios than a human. And again, right there, it's smooth coming in. It could be, again, a little bit faster. They, they have like a conservative profile here where it's just, it's, it's staying a little bit slower than I think it needs to be. So now this is the first time I've done this route on version 11. So again, it's not gonna turn the blinker on and it's just gonna wait until this lane runs out. Which again, I don't think is appropriate. I mean, at bare minimum, turn the blinker on. I mean, at bare minimum, it needs to turn the blinker on. It's just it. I don't. I don't understand why they're not doing it. Maybe this. I mean, maybe this. A not a law that you have to use a blinker on when you're getting on the highway. I don't. I mean, maybe that's not the case. But it's just common courtesy. If there's a car coming on your left, it's like it just. I mean, I guess the intention. If you're on an on ramp, getting on the on ramp, you're merging on. So you don't really need the blinker. I, like that makes sense. But everyone uses the blinker. I mean, I don't know, maybe maybe this is just some a moot point. It's just that it doesn't really matter. We're gonna see here how it gets off the interstate. I'm gonna let it do it on, on its own. Normally I slow it down, but we're gonna see if it slows down smoother. And version 11 has been better at that in terms of how, how well it slows down. So a little bit too aggressively in, before it gets off the highway, but once it's off the highway, this is great. Like, this is a sharp, steep curve here. And it's doing fantastic. It has one more unprotected left, and then we get zero disengagements for this drive. Could have been passed out. I don't think I, besides the speed limit changes, I don't think I even, oh, well, that one, you know, stop sign. Um, I did uh, have to, uh, what's it doing? Wow, uh, the visualizations must have crashed or something. Yeah, it's, that is, uh, saying it's slowing down, but that's definitely messed up. Anyways, everyone, um, this was a uh, zero disengaging drive, as we would hope um, on this route. We have done it several times or many times before in zero disengagements. Uh, if you have questions for me, put them down below, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.